Welcome to our research writing presentation class. Today we're going to be focusing on Unit 4, which is going to take us into a few details, not a lot, but we're going to be looking at capitalization, hyphenation, abbreviations, and how to use things like dashes. So very mechanical today, but I think we'll get over it very fast and very useful. I'm sure you've been writing before and you're thinking, hey, uh, what are these things useful for? How do I use them? How do they how do they fit into my writing? And again, this is not easy for native speakers because it's very detailed. Uh, people just don't know these things unless they learn them. And the only way to learn them is to sit down and study them and most people don't have time to fool around with that. So let's do something simple first and that is spelling. Now, as I've said, in this class we're focusing on American spelling, and the APA, of course, is the American Psychological Association, so they tend to focus on American spelling also, and then most of your journals will be using American spelling. So, of course, if you're a professor, if you're a teacher, if, if you're a person in charge, your department, your school, your library tells you you must use British a spelling, then use British spelling. If you're in a European institution, then they may prefer the UK spelling if you're writing in English. But in this class, we're going to stick with the American one, and the APA also suggests that. So don't be angry at me about that. Okay. How do you check what is the American spelling? The dictionary that the APA recommends is Merriam-Webster's Collegiate Dictionary. So you can get that online. And in fact, they have a fantastic uh, online app that you can use on your mobile phone or on your tablet. And if you get the paid version, they have lots of really great extras that I enjoy. Like every day you learn a new word and you get some really deep information about words. So that's a really useful app to have on your phone. It doesn't play games and it doesn't make sounds. Well, actually, I think it does do a spelling game, but it's really, really great fun and super useful when you're writing your research. I'm always keeping mine next to me and opening it up when I'm trying to figure out a word. So you also can look at the APA Dictionary of Psychology because psychology, of course, has many special words and your area of study may be something like anthropology, sociology, a business, your area may have many special words also. So if your area of expertise of research has something like a dictionary, then please go ahead and refer to that. Latin or Greek origin words can be very troublesome and there's a lot of them in science, that's for sure. So one of the biggest problems is figuring out how to write them as singular or plural, such as appendix and appendices, single plural. Canu canula, canulas, they're like little canals in the body, I think, like veins. Datum, data, this is one that always mixes me up. Phenomenon and phenomena. So how would you kn know all of those? Of course, the best way is to check the dictionary. Possessive and singular names can use an apostrophe like an S. Now, I'm sure you've done this before. And singular plural examples include things like this one here, Freud. Friedman Freud, who was a famous psychologist, right? So how would you write Freud? Freud's or the Freud's. So the first one being the individual, Freud's theory. The second one being it belongs to a group of Freud's, like the whole family. So all of these Freud's together. So you change the location. In the, in the first one there, we have the apostrophe S, and in the second one, S apostrophe. So I think you know how to do that, because you use that in English sometimes. But here's some more example. If the name ends in an S, then you add the apostrophe S, like James's. But if it's a group of James's, like the family of James, then the family of James, that group, would be James's, right? Because you're plural and then you're possessive. Watson, if it belongs to Watson, then it would be Watson's. And if it's a group of Watson's, then it would be Watson's. Skinner's and Skinner's. So Dr. Skinner's theories or the Skinner's meaning the group. So you do have exceptions to this, and this is the trouble with English, isn't it? That there's always exceptions. And here's some really 
great exceptions that will boggle the mind, such as Descartes. You can easily use Google Scholar and find other people who have cited that work to help you see how they cite it. It would be even better if you could use the journal you're targeting that you're sending to and follow the example they have. In that case, that would make things fit their style.